Hello, this is Stu. I uh, just thought I'd do another inbox review for you guys out there. This time of my secret Santa gift, which was given to me by one of the pick, uh, pricks of plastic uh, on the Hangouts. Um, and I have to say, I've had a quick look at this kit and I'm impressed. I really am. It's a beautiful kit. Um, the reason I know that, I was just doing an inbox review just now and unfortunately I ran out of room on my video. Mm. So this is take two. <laughs> So hence why I know this is going to be a good kit. Um, but uh, I have to say, this is an impressive tank. It was actually um, the first post-war uh, Soviet tank of the Cold War, the T-10M. Uh, it was developed from the lines of the, J the Joseph Stalin series of tanks. Um, had two basic stabilisers on the gun sight, uh, a very effective suspension system on it, infrared uh, sight and served a long and distinguished career right up until 1993. It was a uh, base it used as its main frontline tank in the Soviet Armed Forces from around about 1958 onwards and basically was involved in the invasion of Czechoslovakia, Operation Danube, hence the markings on the front here, and as I say served up right until 1993. Um, it was basically initially superseded by the T-60 and T-62 tanks, uh, but up until then it had been its main heavy battle tank, uh, but uh, an impressive beast all the same, especially with this barrel and the muzzle on the end here. Um, I don't know much about its history, so you're going to have to bear with me on that, guys. It's only a little bit that I know. I've done a little bit of research, having read the pamphlet, which comes in the instruction sheet on this kit. Uh, but first off, uh, we've got the main illustration of this impressive beast on the front here. And then to the sides, you've got the various colour options that come with the kit. This is a version which was used at Operation Danube, uh, which is the invasion of Czechoslovakia. And I must admit, this is quite a unique colour scheme, and I may well do that one. Um, and on the other side is of an example used at the Berlin Parade in 1960. Okay, and on the end here, if you know what, if you want to know what the kit uh, number is, it's TS018. Okay, and if you want to pause that, by all means do so. If you want to get hold of this beautiful kit, um, and then we'll move on and see what's inside this box. First off, um, what is quite appropriate is that this is a Tyrannosaurus series of TS0 TS kits. Believe it or not, it looks like a Tyrannosaurus, doesn't it? I mean, from the front view, I mean, especially with that colour of the hull and this low slung sort of front, it certainly looks like a dinosaur, but there you go. Um, right, let's get the instruction sheet first. Just put the box aside. Okay, over here. The thing I like about Meng is their instruction sheets come in this beautiful pamphlet form and again you've got the main illustration on here depicting one of the tanks that was used in Operation Danube and then upon opening it there's a brief history about the development from the Joseph Stalin series of tanks right up until the end of its career okay in 1993 and then on the next page is a little bit about the actual tank's designer, whose name was Joseph uh, Yakov. No, hang on, sorry, excuse me, pronounce Joseph Yakovlevich Kotin. I'll say that again, Joseph Yakovlevich Kotin. Sorry, getting a bit tongue tied. I'm not very good with my Russian, so sorry. And that's just a little brief overview about his influence on the design of the tanks. Okay. Regretfully, he died in 1979, but he was revolutionary in the design of Soviet tanks throughout the early part of the uh, Cold War. Right, uh, first off, it's just showing the tools that you need to use with the building of this kit. Then, basically, it's the assembly of the idler wheel and the sprocket and the main running gear, which you see there. Again, it comes with poly caps, similar to Tamiya. Second part of the stage is the... Um, Assembly of the suspension units onto the lower hull, which you see there. And then the next stage, if I can have it open, there we guys, 
is the twin washing arms onto the suspension units which you see there on the lower hull. Then you supposedly add the running gear as well as the front sprocket onto the final drive and the rear idler wheel. Okay, I won't be doing that until the very latter stages of the assembly. Okay, and then up here it's showing you how to assemble all the various track units together with these two bits here. Okay, so it's going to be a long and lengthy process, or maybe quite a nice easy one, and then it should build up into a nice unit like that. Again, I'll leave you leaving the tracks until the very last stage of the build. And then you've got the back plate assembly here, the unit for holding the fuel tanks, and then obviously you've got the arm for holding the barrel. Okay, and then the assembly of the rear tanks, and some of the storage racks that you see there. And then going on to the assembly of some of the units on the upper hull, which you can see there, including the headlights side pods and frame for the headlights as well as the driver's uh, vision port which you see there okay then obviously you've got the assembly of the rear grills now i'm not sure but i think these are the main parts that go to the kit later you will have the etch brass parts to go on top of the grills then you assemble the headlights onto the upper hole along with some of the other uh, sub-assemblies. Add that to the lower hole along with some more sub-assemblies on the back of the vehicle. Okay, Add your tow arms etc onto that along with some storage racks at the front there. Okay, And then the next stage is to add your edge brass grills which go onto the top of your main grills there. Just add the added detail along with your fuel tanks okay and then put your side log on more fuel tanks more storage goes on the back there and then it's the assembly of the actual turret and the storage racks which go onto the vehicle and the gra uh, grab arms which you see there okay then you add your rear storage now you do have the option of putting the back plate there or having the uh, storage showing okay depending on which version you want to do Okay, then you've got the turret ring, add the assembly for the main gun so you can move, the, elevate the gun up and down. And then add the top of the turret onto that. Build up the commander's cupola and the hatches, which you see there. And then assembly of the submachine gun, which you see there, uh, which looks quite detailed. And the disappointing thing with this kit it's not a one piece barrel, it's two halves. Uh, now, whether I can get hold of a metal barrel for this, I'll have to do some research. I would rather have a metal barrel because, again, you've got to sand that seam line down, and you could use some of the surface texture and detail. Okay, and then you add the sub another machine gun to the rear mantlet, add the commander's cupola and loader's hatch on, along with the submachine gun and the barrel itself. Add the turret to the lower part of the hull, and it's your assembly done. Okay, it does look quite a simple process. Um, how it's going to build, I don't know, I shall find out for myself. Then you've got a map of all the sprue trees here, which is most unusual. I would have thought they'd have done that at the beginning of the instruction sheet, but hey ho. Then you've got your side lugs for assembling your tracks, upper and lower hull, your map of all your etch brass detail there. A poly caps and then obviously your decal sheet. First option is of the version that was used at Operation Danube of the 13th Guards Heavy Tank Division, the 1st Guards Tank Army, the group of Soviet forces in Germany, Operation Danube 1968. That might be the option I might go for. And there's another view of it again. So you've got an overall view, which is a nice touch. Again, the second option is of the 20th Independent Tank Battalion, the 20th Guards Motor Division, the 1st Guards Tank Army, the Group of Soviet Armed Forces, Germany 72-74, that's in East Germany. Third option is of the 1st Guards Tank Army, the Group of Soviet Forces in Germany, Berlin Parade 1960. And then another, the final option is of an unknown unit which was based around about the same area again, early 60s and late 70s uh, to mid 70s. Okay, and that's your assembly sheet done. Right, let's have a look at what the main crux of the kit is. The kit itself. Okay.
Right, first off, you've got assembly lugs here along with your tracks, okay? And the detail on these tracks is superb, I cannot fault them. Um, how they're going to go together, I don't know, but we'll have to wait and see, but it'll be interesting. Oops, sorry about that, a couple of kits fell down. First off, we're getting out of its packaging, is the upper and lower hole, and guys, just look at the casting on this. Absolutely beautifully done. If you can catch it in the light, you'll just see the casting texture on here is absolutely gorgeous. They really have caught it very, very well. So I'll just swing it around and you can see for yourself. And there's obviously the anti-slip surface up the top here. But it just shows you the mightiness of the hull of this beast. She certainly was a beast. There we go. And then on again, on the lower hull, they've really they've caught the casting texture again. Very beautifully done there. And obviously on the very bottom of the tank as well, you've got the casting texture. And there's the escape hatches. Not overly done. Beautifully done. Really nice touch on that, guys. I'll just put those in that in their bag. Okay, put it on the side here. And then the running gear. Again, very crisply moulded, beautifully detailed as you can see there. And with the sprocket wheels again, nicely done. And the final drive, beautifully cast there, moulded. Not one ounce of flesh, guys, I have to say. This is a beautifully crisply moulded kit. And then on the end, you've got the arms for the tow ropes. Okay. I've obviously got the black plastic lugs in here, well, so I, don't, I just don't want to lose them, so I'll just keep them in their packet. Right. And this one. We've got the crew hatches here again and the commander's cupola again on the hatch itself if i get it into shot look at the casting texture on it beautifully caught really well done guys i really am impressed with this kit it is a beauty and then obviously you've got your side log there again the texture on it is beautifully caught it really is and that will come up nicely with a bit of dry brushing and a few oils so very nicely done there. Okay. Okay, so that's that. Put that back in its bag. There we go. And then you've got the back plates. I'm not going to take these out of the bags, guys, because I don't want to break any of these tow ropes. It's a very, very delicate looking, I have to say. But again, on the grills, nicely moulded, beautifully cut through. You don't get that with a lot of Timia kits, I have to say. And then you've got the arms for the tanks, the fuel tanks. Beautiful detail on them. And then the back plate, again, there's some really nice casting texture on that, guys. Really nice. I'll just show you there. I might be able to see it through the plastic bag. But it's beautiful. Very well caught, I have to say. And again, you've got nice detail on the actual fuel tanks themselves. Very crisply moulded again, guys. And even the actual storage um, ammunition racks and units, very nicely caught. That uh, distinctive look of a Soviet tank, really nicely done. Uh, I'm very well. I'm very impressed, actually. Admittedly, you've got weld seams on the back, but by the time you've actually got it onto the kit, you're not going to notice them, to be honest with you. And again, this is impressive. The turret itself. Look at the casting texture again on this turret. It is beautifully caught, and it's just so crisp. Good guards for the old grab handles. And this is going to make one impressive kit, even on the front mantlet. He's got a nice casting texture there as well, beautifully represented. Very well done. And the detail on the actual searchlights, 
not bad I have to say not bad at all there you go right next put that back in there and again you've got this back end storage unit if you want to put that on the back for whichever version you're doing and storage on here they've really caught that very very well that come up nicely with a few washes and a few oils and the barrel obviously again this is the disappointing thing about this kit is in two halves so there you go can't have everything unfortunately again on here the side part the storage nicely caught guys it really is and again with the hatch I mean you can barely see it here in the bag but I can assure you some nice casting texture on that again very well done nice detail on the commander's cupola as well there you go and then obviously this is part of the assembly process for your tracks well it's in clear I've no idea in here you've got your vision ports which you can see here okay I'm not going to take them out because I don't want to lose them but they're nice and clear and even for your visors as well your infrared visors very nicely caught and last but not least uh, let's have a look you've got your torsion arms some of your drive units suspension then spare tank beautifully caught I don't know if you can see that guys yeah i'll put it into view for you again i'm very impressed with the level of detail on this kit it's so crisp as you can see there okay let me have a look through there beautifully caught and then last well penultimately you've got your etch brass grills detail on those is superb uh, they've really caught that well as well as some of the side armour and frontal armour. Um, it's going to be a bit fiddly but um, obviously I've got the tools to do it now so I'm not worrying about it. But it does come up beautiful if you notice. Really nicely done guys. And then finally you've got the decal sheet. Um, let's have a look and see what this is like briefly take it out and look at the decals yeah a little bit shiny uh, I don't know what they'll bed down like possibly dyed by cartograph but nicely done very nicely done not uh, very nice and neat how they bed down I don't know because I've not actually used any of Meng's decals I'll put it back in its little bag if I can I don't want this to get ruined so there you have it in a nutshell, that is the T10M from um, Meng. First impressions, superb kit, level of detail on it is absolutely exceptional. Um, certainly you get a lot for your money to be honest with you. And uh, I'm glad I got it as, um, as, as a new secret Santa gift, it was one funny enough I'd had my eye on just before Christmas. Uh, so obviously somebody knew, whoever bought it, knew exactly what I like. So um, Secret Santa, whoever you are, I am extremely, extremely grateful for this lovely, lovely gift. Uh, because I, for one, am fully converted to Meng now. In fact, I've got a few of their kits. Um, but this one is an absolute beauty for a Soviet war tank. Um, I just love the casting texture on it as well. And I should imagine this will build up into an impressive beast. So guys, if you can get the chance of getting this kit, do. It might cost some amount of money, but to be honest with you, for what you get in it is value for money. So I heartily recommend it. And, and uh, when I get around to this, I am really going to get my teeth into this. Anyway, uh, once again, I want to thank my secret Santa from the POP um, hangout group. So thank you ever so much for this. That's an added, a very valued kit to my stash, and I shall enjoy building that. Anyway, until the next time, guys, get kit crazy, happy modelling, 
subscribe, leave your comments and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Take care.